about your expectations for this upcoming season? Yeah, you know, every season you go into it, you're always obviously excited about your team. Um, you know, we haven't had that, that first pitch yet or that first error, that first loss, but uh, I'm really excited about our team. You know, coming off a, a bad year last year, we've done a lot of work uh, within our staff and with our program uh, to try not to let that happen again. And so it's a lot of things from, um, you know, the mental side of it, trying to handle adversity a little bit better. And, uh, and then, of course, trying to get better in, in developing our guys. And so really excited. Got a lot of talent, uh, have a lot of unproven guys, um, a lot of new guys. We have 18 new guys with 15 freshmen. And so it's been a uh, interesting fall and spring to let those guys gel. But I think that's why I'm most excited is uh, our, our group has really become um, a family. I know you hear that a lot, but our guys truly have, um, you know, got together and, and uh, they're really close. And so I'm excited to see that hopefully continue throughout the spring and uh, excited for, for opening night. From last season as a coach and seeing how the players were affected and in going into this season, how are you going to continue to learn? I think number one is, you know, from, from the very first meeting last year, it was, hey, you guys got to stay apart. You got to stay, you know, away from each other. We got to continue to test negative uh, to this season. Hey, the quicker we become a family, the quicker you guys understand there's, you know, guys that are 18 years old, 19 year olds, and guys that are 23 year olds. You guys got to become friends and teammates and brothers and and uh, the quicker you do that the quicker we're gonna have a chance to win a championship and so to me it wasn't the x's and o's there's small things you can do x's and o's wise to me it was more the the, the culture side of it of you know guys becoming a one and, and guys becoming a true team and and like i said when adversity hits that's when you, you truly get that test as a team and so um, i think the other side of it is the importance of staying healthy. You know, we had some really great players go down last year, um, and, and to be great, your best players have to stay healthy. And so uh, that's part of it as well, which is kind of out of control. And so uh, we, we harp on controlling what we can control. And, and uh, when adversity hits, good. You got to find a way to fight through it. And, and uh, that's why you got 40 guys on the roster. Coach, where do you feel like things went sideways for you guys last year? Because you obviously have had a lot of talent returning. So what, what do you feel like things went sideways? And what do you want your players to take away from that season? Yeah, I mean, we've, we've, we've hit it straight ahead. I think when you have uh, bad things happen to you, you can either steer away from them and not talk about them, or you can stare them right in the face and go get after it. And for us, that's exactly what we've done. And so, uh, the number one, like I said, I think was the health part of it. You know, when, when uh, some of your key guys go down, it's really hard to replace them, especially with the schedule we were playing. I think if it was maybe a different year with a different schedule due to COVID, we had to play uh, that schedule. And, and so, um, so that was always number one. And then, like I said, you know, we've used, uh, we brought in Brian Kane, who's our sports psychologist, to work a, a lot with our guys. He came in person. We have Zooms with him. Uh, we do stuff daily from the mental game. And so for us, it was more about how do we get uh, stronger mentally to handle that adversity because same thing, it's going to happen. We're going to have somebody get hurt and, uh, or something's going to happen and we got to find a way to, to overcome it. You talked about the schedule. Tell us about the non-conference schedule. What are you expecting from that? Yeah, it's always, I mean, we always play a challenging schedule. Um, you know, usually try to find some teams up north that want to come to the south to play with warm weather. Um, and so hopefully they're not in shorts today up there, but uh, it'll, it'll be good. You know, Utah Valley got a new head coach, uh, Coach Smith, coming from LSU. So they're going to be fired up and excited uh, to play under him for his first weekend. And so we'll get a completely different team, I think, than, than they had last year. Um, and then you move to uh, go to Globe Life, which will be, uh, was a fun trip last year for us, and have a, a great Wichita State team, and then come home to a huge name in Ohio State. That'll be a fun uh, weekend, and then we have um, a really, really challenging week with at Arizona, who I think is number 12 in a poll, and then Texas comes in back-to-back uh, -back midweeks uh, with them, who are number one, and then we end up with Southern before we head into conference. So um, challenging, and uh, but you know we want to see where our team stands, and, and uh, you know ready for the challenge. The note of adversity, you're losing Will Hollis, who, I mean, he led in a lot of his instances at Texas mm -hmm. State, uh, let it walk, double slugging percentage. One big thing that I noticed was his consistency and ability to, I mean, you know, they're 200 ABs, I think the only other one that came close was Gonzalez. Right. Um, do you have anybody or any number of players that you really see that kind of stepping up to fill in that role of Hollis and being able to be that consistent hitter? Yeah, I mean, I hope so. I mean, if, if they're healthy, they, we, we'd had a lot of guys with 200 at-bats, I promise you. So uh, that, that's always number one. But we do. I mean, we have a lot of older guys that could be in the lineup. Uh, but we have some truly talented, really young guys that um, I'm anxious to see how they do when the lights come on and another team steps into the dugout. And so uh, we, have, we have a lot of depth. And, uh, but some of it is just uh, they, they haven't been through the battles yet. So I'm anxious to see how, um, you know, practice is great. Fall games are great. Alumni games great. Scrimmages are great. 
and those lights come on and those stands get filled and there's another color in the other team, uh, not the maroon and gold over there. It's a, it's a different ball game. And so some, some guys rise to the occasion and get better. And some guys, um, it kind of takes them away from the moment. And that's our job as coaches to help them out. And so I think there's a lot of guys that could have over 200 at bats, um, but they have to uh, take advantage of their opportunities when they get in there. You talk about the new players a lot. What personality do they bring to the team? Yeah, you know, I think it's always a, a different mix when you have, you know, 15 freshmen and as many older guys as we have, it's, there's, there's a large gap in there. And so I think what the older guys have done a great job of is they recognize first how talented they are. I mean, they're the 33 rate uh, team, 33 rate recruiting class in the country, which is really hard to find. Um, you know, we were number four in Texas, number one in the Sun Belt. There's a lot of talent in that freshman class. And so I think once they recognize that a little bit, it's, it's a little easier to become closer with them when they realize, hey, they're going to really help us win uh, this year. And so, um, so, so for me, the, the new guys, they're, they're a little bit, everybody's a little different. You know, you got everything. And so, but the one thing I'll tell you is that they're talented and they really love to play the game. And so that's been, um, you know, an adjustment for them of how much we play and, and how much uh, the level we play at. But they, they love the game of baseball and they're soaking it in. And so I'm excited to see uh, where that turns out for them, not just this year, but uh, for, their, for their tenure here. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think, you know, starting on the pitching side of it, uh, Levi Wells is a transfer from Texas Tech, pitched in the Super super Regional last year uh, for those guys. And so he's got a really, really big arm uh, with plus stuff. And then Peyton Zabel, um, another transfer we have coming in, big 6'7 kid from South Dakota. Um, and so he's got a chance to, he didn't pitch a lot this fall. Um, and so we're kind of getting him back in there this spring. And he's got a chance to be uh, really dominant. Uh, from that freshman class, like I said, there's a lot of guys that are going to have Great Bobcat careers. Uh, probably number one for me is Dalen Pena, uh, freshman from Vets Memorial down in Corpus. And the guy can just, he can really, really hit. And I think um, he's going to be a guy that get his chances early. And and uh, he's, I think right now, he's leading our team in hitting in the, in the early spring, hitting over 500. But uh, just one, one of those baseball guys that just loves to base run, loves to do everything. And just, he's super competitive uh, from that side. And so we got a, a bunch of arms, a bunch of other players. Um, I think Ryan Leary is another guy that's going to be uh, really, really talented talented over his career here, got a big arm. We've had a really good stable short stops. We're here for one of them here in a second, but um, he's another guy that probably in his future could be that next big name at shortstop because he's got a plus plus arm um, over there. And so there's a lot of guys, a lot of depth. And so I'll make you see how they respond when the lights come on. Coach, after losing 10 seniors, you know, who are some guys who have been here for a while who you think will get a shot and, and, and get a larger role for this season? Yeah, I mean, you know, the, the two guys, and, and they're here today that, um, you know, got hurt some last year. John Wuthrich, you know, has played a lot of games for us in right field. Uh, broke his handmate last year, so he was out for 37 games. So get him back consistently in that lineup from not just a physical standpoint, but a leadership standpoint. Um, and then Dalton Shuffield, who's been our shortstop and has had a phenomenal career, um, both offensively and defensively. So getting those back, you know, hopefully they stay healthy and we stay consistent out there. Um, and then, you know, we got veteran guys. You know, you got JT Thompson, who has been our third baseman the last few years. Um, you know, Faison has had a great year after having a rough year last year, but so far he's been. Uh, back to Wesley of, of 2020. And then, uh, you know, some of those guys in the outfield with uh, McLean, Ortega Jones, you got Gibbons on the infield. Um, I think probably the biggest guy that's going to have to step up this year is Peyton Lewis behind the plate. Um, and so we, you know, we lost both of our senior catchers last year and um, he's kind of filled that role. And so we got other guys uh, behind him, but he's a guy that's probably going to get a little bit more, um, you know, he's got to show up every day for him where in the past he's kind of been a role guy. So you talk about uh, those returning seniors. Um, speaking of, you know, Faison and Mm -hmm. Especially after Faison's uh, big home run hitting in, uh, in the summer league ball and stuff like that. Right. Just dropped off immediately. Yeah. Um, what are you looking at from him this year, and, and uh, what do you expect that has changed from him to make that, uh, I guess, transition? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, hitting and baseball in general, it's, it's built off failure, you know. So our, our job as coaches is to find a way to get their confidence back and find a way to give them something to, to hang on to. So when they do go through those patches of going over for 4, they don't get a hit for a weekend, how do, how do they stay confident? Uh, for both those guys, it's, it's their work ethic. I think when you put enough hard work in there, um, it usually works out for you um, in the end. And so those guys are extremely hard workers and they, and they love to go get after it. And uh, they've made strides this year. And so um, same thing, you know, you never know how it's going to go the first few times out. Uh, but we've hopefully given them something to hang on to from the mental game part of it to hopefully when they when they do struggle, and, and which everybody's going to struggle at some point in time, they've got something they can go to with their routine and, and understand that, 
the history, uh, you know, the last games are history, and we gotta we gotta look for the present moment. With the season right around the corner, what are you most excited about? Yeah, I mean, for us, it's just getting back out there. You know, we ended last year on a on a nine game losing streak, so that's a uh, that's a long off season to. Uh, to uh, re remember the, the 21 season. And so I think for all of us, you know, we want to go get that, that first win under our belt. Uh, but for me, I, I'm just excited to watch these guys get back in the moment, get back in playing, uh, see this ballpark filled up. And so it's just always fun. Scrimmages at this time, they, you know, it's more about getting the pitch counts up and getting the guys continue to uh, see live at bats. But for me, um, it's making sure we stay healthy heading into opening weekend. And then, yeah, just see, see these guys get after it and hopefully head on with a win that first night. Talk a little bit about the new pitchers coming in, but you, you got a couple of guys returning who have a lot of starts mm -hmm. under their, their belt. How do you feel like the rotation is going to shake out for this season? Yeah, I think a goal with with all um, you know coaching staffs is trying to figure out that pitching staff as quick as you can while winning games, uh, while still making those adjustments. And so for us, when we have five games the first week, we're going to get a lot of guys out there on that mound. And so, um, you know, Zeke Wood's been a guy that has, to me, turned the corner a little bit more from last year, uh, just more consistent in the strike zone. Never been about stuff with Zeke. It's a bit more about um, his consistency. Uh, Tristan Dixon's a guy that's battling right now in that weekend rotation. We moved his arm angle down a little bit, gave him a different um, attack mode from the side, and, and he's got a sinker slider. I think in the fall he struck out 24 guys and walked one gave up one run the entire fall. So um, super confident in himself right now. So that would be a good mix. And then you mix in, um, you know, some of those guys like Jonathan Martinez and, and of course, Cameron Bush has done a little bit of everything. And, and Tristan Stivers can start. He also, we know he's got a lot of confidence in the back end as well. So um, there's, there's enough really good arms in there. We just got to figure out the right rotation to help this team uh, go win games and go win a championship. Um, one phrase that you brought up a, a lot last season was we had to get back to having fun. Uh -huh. um, what are some of the changes that you've made in the offseason to, to try, try to get back to that? Yeah, you know, I don't know necessarily in the off season uh, because I feel like in the off season it's there, there's not a lot of adversity in the off season, right? You, every day there's a, a team usually win, loses a uh, inter squad game or wins an inter squad game, but you know it doesn't go on permanently in your record or anybody's stats. And so um, you know we we've tried to approach it the same way. You know, add in a couple, we went and played some paintball and things like that to have a little more fun with them. But for us. Not a lot of changes when it comes to that side of it. To me, it's just more how do we respond uh, when those things happen, um, you know, in the middle of the season. And so that always starts with me. How do I respond to the team? How do I respond uh, to adversity myself? And so um, I think they're always going to look at, at, at me as their leader of, you know, how, how does my attitude change, win, lose, or draw? And so I'm trying to be more consistent as a coach, as a person. Um, and, and if you show up to the ballpark, you don't know if we're winning or losing. And so to me, that's bringing energy and, and uh, bringing energy for my guys every day but you know for us I think that's that's the key is you know winning's more fun than losing so winning's always the easier way to, to, to cure the fun part of it but I mean we haven't changed a lot from that standpoint just more on the side of um, you know just trying to change our emotions a little bit. All right, well, um, John you know you, you kind of battled through some injuries last year what were some of your takeaways from last season? Uh, last year was rough for me um, just not getting to be out there with the team was tough um, I've done it before my sophomore year Missed some playing time due to my back, and this year was my hand. I feel like I've done a lot to try and stay healthy and get to play, but when things don't go your way, it's tough. And uh, so it was a real gut check for me, trying to figure out how I'm going to handle it, how I'm going to still help the team while not being able to play. So, I mean, I learned a lot about myself, um, about the team, you know, just trying to put the team first no matter what my situation is. What were some of the ways you figured out that you were able to help the team? Um, I guess. It was year four for me, so I'd seen what winning teams do, what losing teams do. So I'm trying to help them stay in the right mindset, um, trying to do my part as a leader on the team. Uh, even if I don't really affect the score, uh, I can kind of have a little bit of an impact in the dugout, kind of team morale, um, you know, focus off the field, make sure that we're keeping the main thing the main thing. So um, just kind of from that perspective, learned a little bit how I can lead from there. What's different about this team than any of the other teams that you've been in the past? Um, I think this team is really similar to 2019. Um, not a whole lot of ego. You know, we've got the, the main prize as uh, the championship on our minds. Um, own self gratification and awards and stats aren't, aren't really taking the forefront for this team. I think, you know, with the age gap with 18 year olds and like me, I've been here t uh, five years. I'm 23 years old. It can be tough. I don't really watch TikTok or play Fortnite or anything like that, so that's tough. But um, I mean, 
everybody's working together. No one's looking down on each other. No one's thinking they're above the rules, above you know working hard every day. So I think that's been big for this team. So you talk about your fifth year here, and uh, you talked about how like you know you don't have any like personal goals or anything like that uh, individually as uh, as players. But um, do you have any team goals for yourself or uh, just for the team as a whole? Yeah, I think um, you know I want to get back to where we are winning the Sun Belt. Uh, regular season and I've never played well in the conference tournament so I think as a team our goal is to do what we can in regular season and as well as postseason to where we can get to a regional get to a super do everything that we want to do um, I mean I want to have personal success but nothing is more fun than winning and I think everybody gets that and everybody's bought into that John what do you feel like it's going to take to get back to that point where y'all were in 2019? Um, I think it's really just focus I think this group has done a really good job of being really locked in to the day itself, if it's a scrimmage day, if it's a work day, whatever it is, we know kind of the why of what we're doing. You know, every day is to help us get better. Um, as we scrimmage, like this weekend, we had three days of scrimmages in a row, but we know um, the, the benefits of them. The pitchers need their innings, we need our at-bats, and they can get long and drawn out, but uh, we, we understand the why of it, how it's helping us, so we're bought into that and bought into winning championships. During those practices, you obviously have to face some of the pitchers. What's a pitcher that's looking really good to you right now? I mean, we have a lot. Uh, Saturday, I think me and Wesley Faison were the two and three or three and four hitter for our team. And we looked up, and after the first four at bats for us, we were over two each with four Ks or something like that. And it's just kind of a testimony to how good our pitching staff is. Travis Sungren, Levi. Uh, Cam Bush, there's a lot of guys who are really good. They have electric arms and really good stuff. And for a lot of those guys like Travis, he's always had the stuff. It's just the command that, that's come with age and experience. And we've really seen that with our pitching staff. So you talk about you know being here for a while and being with that 2019 Sunbelt Championship team. Um, what do you tell these younger guys uh, to get them ready for this season and with that the Sunbelt Conference is? Um, I, I think the young guys have a really good understanding of how important it really is. It's easy to show up every day and kind of think it's corny or uh, kind of embarrassing to go all out every single day for nine innings or for three hours of practice, whatever it is. But they love the game and they play hard. They respect the game. They respect um, their teammates, their coaches. So playing hard every day, that's the biggest thing. And it's easy to kind of get lackadaisical with it, um, get a little lazy. And this team really hasn't bought into that. We've uh, kind of rejected mediocrity and trying to be our best every single day. With the season just around the corner, what's one thing you're most excited about? Uh, I'm excited to play in front of fans again. Uh, last year I played opening weekend. That was pretty much it, like some games late in the season. But the season was kind of already, you know, off the rails a little bit. So getting to play in front of a big crowd uh, without COVID restrictions will be a lot of fun. Uh, playing under the lights, you know, last time playing with all my friends, I'm, I'm just really excited. What are you all going to do to keep from getting complacent this year? Um, I mean, for, for me, it's realizing that I'm going to work a nine to five or, you know, a real life job after this in a couple months. So uh, not being satisfied with just being mediocre, um, rejecting that and making sure we're striving to be the best that we can be to win games because um, that's going to be the most fun. And that's what we'll remember. So playing hard for that and knowing that, you know, I've been playing this game for 19 years, 20 years, something like that. And, uh, and seven-year-old me would wish that I would go all out every day. And I would regret it if I didn't. So kind of keeping that on my mind. In 2019, you had a pretty much, I mean, the whole team was just clicking. Um, last year, you came back, obviously, on limited games, but put up respectful numbers. Are, has there been any change in your approach, or are you just trying to look to get back to that level of, um, yeah, I don't think my approach has really changed that much. I think I've had success, so trying to duplicate that again. Um, and it all starts with hard work. I mean, you can kind of psych yourself up to do whatever it is, trying to get in the mi right mindset, but really it's, it's the work. Um, trying to get my confidence back. And, and then for me, I earned that in the weight room, in the cages, putting in extra time. Uh, just trying to get back to where every time I step in the box, I'm really confident, I feel prepared for whatever I'm going to face. So, you know, looking back at last season, what were some of your takeaways from that year? Um, well, I mean, we didn't do too well uh, in, on the field and really off. Uh, 
We, I think our GPA as a team wasn't very too good in the, in the class. I think it was uh, either 2-5 or something like that. Um, and then, I mean, going from that to this year, we had our uh, best GPA for a semester. And I think that kind of goes onto the baseball field as well, um, just to see how hard our guys are working. Just, I mean, in the classroom, we have 18 new guys, I believe. Um, and they have helped tremendously with the attitude of this team, uh, just going, working on the field and off. And so uh, that I think that GPA standpoint is huge for us, and it just kind of shows how, how hard we're willing to work as a team. Yeah, y'all went into that year with, with really high expectations. Y'all had a lot of talent returning. Where do you think things kind of went sideways for you guys? Um, I don't think it was talent uh, talent standpoint. I mean, we had great talent from one to nine pitching staff. I think it was really just uh, the attitude of our team. Uh, I think near the middle towards the end, that's when we kind of slowing down a lot. And I think we were just going into games like pretty timid and we were just not looking at the other guy and going, hey, like, I know, I know I'm better than you. <laughs> and I know that we can we can do something to beat these guys. And I mean, we beat some really good opponents, but then we lost to some opponents that we probably should have beat. Um, but I really think it's that attitude standpoint, just because we just, we had a lot of older guys and uh, we just kind of went through things nonchalantly. Um, and with the attitude of our team now, we're ready to work every day uh, and try to prevent that from happening this year. How are the new players hoping that it could be different? Um, uh, with the new guys, they kind of just bring looseness. You know, they they come out and they work really hard, but they do it in a way that's that's fun. You know, uh, that's what we, I mean, that's what I try to do every day. I try to go out there, work as hard as I can, and but also have fun. And these guys just kind of, just bring that to the table and they uh, they just have great attitudes coming out every day and I mean I love them guys they're all all the new guys all 18 of them I mean uh, a bit like I know one of them he's not on our team right now uh, he came here in the fall uh, Max Crab he's been a huge influence on me um, and just he's an amazing guy Peyton Zabel as well just great overall human beings and uh, they're definitely going to help this team for sure. Um, when you look at the roster, you know, who are some guys in the offseason that you've seen take on bigger roles for the team? Ooh, take on bigger roles. Uh, leadership standpoint, uh, Peyton Zabel. I mean, guy, he, he uh, didn't pitch very much in the fall due to injury, um, but he was always around helping, helping whoever he could. Um, and then uh, Dalen Pena, um, he just, I mean, guy is a relentless worker. I mean, I can't, I can't even describe how hard that guy works in the weight room, in the class, on the field. Um, and he has proved himself over and over and over. I mean, everyone looks at that guy and is like, that, that guy, he, he great hitter. I mean, he's gonna, he's gonna help our program down the line this year. In the future, he's he's going to be a great player for us. With the season right around the corner, what are you expecting from yourself, the team, and just in general? Ooh, sorry, can you repeat that? What are you expecting from yourself and the team in general? Oh, I mean, I'm ex. <laughs> I mean, expectations are high for sure. Um, for me, uh, had a slow year last year with the bat. I mean, didn't have my uh, greatest year. It was actually my worst year statistically. Um, but we just got to, for me, I just got to go on to the next thing. Uh, it's a new year, um, and I'm going to focus on trying to get better in the field. I had one error last year, so I'm going to try to make that zero this year. Um, but from a team standpoint, I mean, it's been a world of a difference from last year just because I feel just the work ethic, I mean, from the freshmen as well. I mean, these guys have worked harder than anyone I've ever seen and it makes makes the older guys work harder and you just want to go out there and work hard with these guys just because they're just great individuals and I can't even describe how hard they've made me work because of their work ethic I mean I've 
gotten a lot stronger in the weight room because of them. Uh, gotten stronger with my mindset uh, for baseball, class, just overall life, just because of those guys. And they are going to help this team tremendously. So what are the, some of the things that you and the team need to do to, to keep from getting complacent this year? We just need to go back to the basics, I believe. Like, uh, we have our uh, mental health coach, uh, Brian Kane, and we've been doing his podcast every day, uh, listening to that and uh, going through his little 30 day program. We've been kind of going over his 30 day uh, all the time. We've been doing it since the fall. So we've gone through it at least four or five times, I think. Um, and it comes with a lot of knowledge with the game of baseball and just life in general. Um, <laughs> And uh, so when we kind of bounce back to that, I think that's going to help us tremendously with the mental side. How, how has it helped you specifically? Um, it's helped me because, you know, life kind of 360s, yeah. Um, so right now uh, in my personal life, things hadn't gone too well. Um, but, I mean, I just fall back on... Our team, our coaching staff, coaching staff has helped me tremendously. They're great coaches, but I mean, they're gonna be lifelong people that I can talk to. Um, and same with the team, uh, like, kind of life hits you in the face, uh, but these guys are, they, they've helped me tremendously. And you know, uh, I think mental health is a huge deal uh, for student athletes and um, these guys, they're, they're amazing people, and they've helped me, I mean, even in the last week. I mean, you feel down, but these guys are always there to pick you up, especially, especially guys like John Wethrich, uh, Wesley Faison, and Peyton Zabel. Those guys are just amazing individuals. How big of an impact on the culture, subculture from now to last year do you think that is? And do you think that's helping translate to better production on the field um, as well as off like preseason? Um, yeah, so with the like implementation of uh, Brian Kane, he kind of came in. The guy is a nut job, like, <laughs> but he is awesome. He came in here with like three bangs in his hands and just chugged them all, got us fired up, um, and then kind of just went through how we can better ourselves on the field, uh, not physically, but mentally, and going through routines, going through just things that will help us lock in, like either at the plate, like off the field, on the bench, whatever we can do to be in the game. And, um, I have taken that as I need to better myself because when I would do something, like I would get out, I would think about that for until I got up next. And so with Brian Kane, it's like, yeah, keep your helmet in your hand as, as long as you can uh, while you're in the dugout. But once that helmet leaves your hand, you don't think about that at bat, at bat anymore. Like you're done with that at bat, you gotta go to the next thing. Um, and I think that's going to help our team tremendously um, just getting on to the next thing, not worrying about something that's already happened. Tell me, who are some of the pitchers that have been giving you problems in practice? Oh, pitchers that give me problems? Uh, i got to say Matt Nick. He's always giving me problems. Uh, he's a fifth-year senior just like I am, came in at the same time, and I think I've only gotten like two hits off of him in five years. Um, and other than that, uh, I mean, Matt Nathan, the guy's a great pitcher, throws a lot of strikes. Uh, struck me out last time we faced. Um, but I got to say, right now, Levi Wells, he's a great pitcher, electric arm. He's got a lot of good stuff. I mean, breaking ball is fantastic. Fastball has a lot of life, a lot of, a lot of uh, velo and uh, spin rate on it. So... He's, he's going to be a tough guy for a lot of hitters to face this year.